In this lesson we will prove the basis extension theorem. Proof basis extension theorem. So the idea is the, the one of replacing vectors in G by vectors in I using the fact that these, these ones are generators. So every vector in I is a linear combination of vectors in G. Okay, so we start from V1. So first step, we can certainly write V1 as a linear combination for i that goes 1 to k of lambda i w i. This uses the fact that uh, this, the set g is a set of generators. Now certainly there will exist an index j, let's call it j, such that lambda j is non-zero. Because if they were all zeros, then v1 would be the zero vector, but the zero vector cannot be in any set of linearly independent vectors, as we noticed in the previous uh, lecture. Therefore, there will be one that is non-zero, let's call it j, the index j, so we can uh, write wj in function of all the other vectors. So that implies that we can write wj as okay we have 1 over lambda j that multiplies v1 minus linear combination of let's say i different from j lambda i w i okay so w j is a linear combination of all the other w i's and v1 so if we replace w j in g with uh, all these vectors nothing will change the property of g being uh, the property of these vectors being a generator of v will not change so let g1 equals v1 and then w1, so on, until, well, wj will be removed, okay, and we just keep going until wk. We call this a g1, so we have Well, the, the vector space generated by G1 is again V. Okay. Now, step number two. We try to do the same with V2 and, and G1. Okay, so we are exactly as a previous step, but instead of using V1 and G, we will be using V2 and G1. Okay, since G1 is a set of generators, we will have a linear combination of V2 in function of elements of G1 that will look like beta 1 times V1 plus a linear combination for I different from J of beta i's 
different from j and greater than 1. Beta i is w i. Okay. So we will be using these w i vector remaining. And again, we can actually conclude that there exists an index A such that beta A is different from zero. How comes? Okay, let's see, suppose that this is not the case, so all these beta i's are zeros, and we have v2 equals beta 1 times v1. Okay. Then, this is impossible, because the, beta, the v i's are part of a linear independent set of vectors. Therefore, there cannot be a vector that is a multiple of any other vector. In particular, v2 cannot be multiple of v1. So we have not, okay, we have used before the fact that the vi's were linearly independent, saying that in particular v1 cannot be the zero vector. Now we use it again, saying that v2 cannot be a multiple of v1. Okay. Therefore, this linear combination must involve a certain non-zero coefficient in the wi's. Okay. So, as before, this implies that we can express WA as a linear combination, beta A, that multiplies V2 minus beta 1 V1 minus linear combination with certain indices. This is a linear combination of WA in function of V2, V1, and the remaining vectors WI. Therefore, we can replace WA in function of all these vectors, and we will still have a set of generators. So let... G2 equals V1, V2, and then W1, so on, and we will remove WA and W, uh, what was, J. last index is k okay so we just uh, keep going on with this pro procedure and at each stage we will find a non-zero coefficients in the wi vectors simply because if if they were all zeros then i would have a vi uh, expressed as a linear combination of other vi's, which is impossible because of their linear independence, okay? So, by keep going, going, we will possibly and up with two situations so the first one a is that well we will exhaust all the vi's uh, before the WJs, the WIs, okay? So we will end up with the G, 
GH, well, let's say G1 was with V1, okay, so GH being the set V1 through VH, and then some W, let's call it um, U1 up to W U S okay so we will exhaust first the V the V I's before the finishing the W I's therefore that implies this in particular this case in particular implies as we anticipated that H is less or equal than K. So the number of elements in the linearly dependent vectors in I will always be less or equal than number of generators in a number of elements in a set of generators of V. Okay, this we anticipated in the previous lecture. So in this case we will end up this way we are not there yet because we have to get a basis out of this set in a very specific way. So remember that the statement is that we can add to the VIs certain number of W vectors in order to complete it to a base, a basis. Now here we don't know yet that we have a basis we just know that these are again a set of, this is again gh is a set of generators for v but we can at this point remove vectors from the w kind of vectors that are linearly dependent with all the others and eventually we will end up with the vec with the set of linearly independent vectors that are generators just because we will be removing vectors from w's which are linearly which are linear combination of all the other vectors okay so eventually this process will halt and what we will end up is a set of vectors comprising all the vi's and some of the w's and this set will be a basis for for v the other case that a priori might happen is the following b so the process of adding vectors vi will finish before we have added all the vi's okay so we will end up uh, to some g let's say mm, r of the following kind v1 through VR for R strictly less than K. Okay, so all the V uh, the W I's will be exhausted in the in the in the step before in the previous steps, and we will just finish it, just picking up a few V I's and not all of them. Okay, but this situation is impossible because you see the assumption is that all the VIs including the remaining ones those from VR plus 1 up to VH are linearly independent but if these already are a set of generators then any ad adding any other vector in the vector space will make this set a set of linearly dependent vectors because we will be adding vectors that are linear combination of these vi's from 1 to r therefore in particular the remaining ones they will be linear combination of these and this contradicts the assumption that they are all linearly independent so this is impossible this finishes the proof of the theorem